This month marks a year that I've been on YouTube. And all this time, my CNC machine has been the centerpiece of not only my YouTube channel, but my shop as well. And during that time, I've used it to make just about everything you can imagine, anywhere from an inlaid cutting board to a wood mallet to plaques to chess pieces. I even made a baby bed with it. And the co-stars of this little show is obviously my table saw, my drum sander, and of course my press. I couldn't live without my press. This thing has saved me tons and tons of heartache over using clamps. And over time, I've even given diode lasers a try. But they've left a lot to be desired because though they work good, I just didn't have a huge cutting area. So I tried buying an add-on to my current CNC machine offered by Onefinity. This is the JTEC 44 watt, and it does great. It cuts well and engraves well, but you can't go very fast because you add this laser head on with this 12 pound spindle and you get it up to any kind of speed and well, you're, just, you're gonna sling the damn thing apart. So other than just minor cutting and engraving, an actual laser project really hasn't been at the forefront of my mind. But things change. Please welcome a new member to the MS Woodworks family a Monport 130-watt CO2 laser. Monport contacted me a little while ago and asked me if I would be willing to do a review on this monster, and I graciously accepted with the understanding that I would give my honest and possibly br brutal good old boy opinion of this thing in the event that I didn't like it. And they agreed, and they sent it anyway. So here we go. My honest first impression of this thing is actually very well made. If you've kept up with this channel for any length of time, you've heard me mention my buddy Ballheaded Mike. He actually has far more experience with CO2 lasers than I do, and he come over and helped me unpack it and get it set up, and even he was impressed with it. His seal of approval of it meant more to me than I let on because I have big plans for this thing. More than the power of the laser, the size of the bed is what gave me warm and fuzzy feelings. 35 by 55 inch cutting bed means I can do some projects that are comparable to what I can do on my CNC machine and mix projects between the CNC machine and the laser. So I'm really excited about what I can do with this machine. It comes with a standard honeycomb bed as you see here, but it also underneath it has the what they call knife blade bed. And those can be removed and put in any kind of sequence or order that you like. You could probably hide a body in there if you wanted to. Another thing I like about it, it has access panels on eat four sides of it. it. Makes it easy to clean or access parts. And it's got this nifty little tray to catch all your, your wood droppings. It also comes with auto air assist as well as an autofocus function. Another impressive thing, to me at least, was how far the bed would lower for the Z. You could get some pretty big stuff in there, and you could get just a little under 6 inches between the focal length of the laser head and the bed. Monport is also sending me a chiller to keep the CO2 tube cool, but it's on back order. So for now, I'm just using a good old-fashioned tub of distilled water and an aquarium pump. I've put the machine through its paces since I've gotten it and the pump seems to keep it cool as it needs to be. Now for something that I'm not a fan of and that's the fume extraction. These two fans on the back, though the ports are very well done, the fans aren't very powerful and in future I'm going to replace those with stronger fans. And here is the business section of the whole machine, 130 watt CO2 laser tube. Can you believe they sent a redneck a laser blaster from Star Wars? Since I've gotten this monster, I've been dreaming up stuff that I can do with it. Some things, well, that's for a later video. Once Mike and I got this thing set up, then I started the obligatory test. The graving test, cutting test, everything you need to do to get to know the machine and know what its perimeters and its, its behaviors are. And then once those are done, I just started cutting stuff, burning stuff, seeing what the machine would do, getting used to it, understanding it, 
CO2 laser is a little bit different than a diode laser. A few more settings to consider when you're doing your math for your cuts and your engraves. And so once I thought I had it figured out enough, I then set out to make what every new laser owner makes, a decorative box. Now I'm not a huge fan of ply, but I know that it has its place in doing stuff like this, but I had a piece of black limba panel that's eight inches thick that I had made in a previous project and I actually cut it out for this box. And though it is prettier than ply, I understand why now they make things like this out of ply because it's much stronger. And when I was trying to put this thing together, well, the black limba so thin is pretty brittle and fragile and well, I broke it. But you get the gist of it. It cut really, really well. After cutting out the box, I tried my hand at some other materials. I purchased some anodized aluminum business cards as well as some leather patches to see how well that did. And it really did great. Now, another thing I really enjoyed marking on my smaller diode lasers was engraving glass. I really, really enjoyed it, but it was kind of painful because they were so slow. But this thing is a beast and you can turn out something and nothing flat. And I was having so much fun, I was looking for just about anything I could get my hands on to put in that laser. I even cut up some cardboard to see how well and how easy that was to mark. And I even engraved a paper towel. Then once I was done playing, I figured it was time to knuckle down and do a serious project. So I come up with this little idea of putting down a piece of ply temporarily. And I actually cut out a corner. So I knew that it was parallel with the gantries and it gave me a consistent and repeatable mark for my origin, my zero. So when I laid other work pieces down, I wouldn't have to change my origin each time. And when I have the time to work on it, I'm going to make a proper fence something that's repeatable where I don't have to do something temporary like this. So <clears throat> now the project I wanted to come up with, like I mentioned earlier, I love engraving on glass. So I actually bought a ready-made grayscale image off of Etsy, something that I could engrave in this glass. And I tried a couple of test pieces before and though it looked really, really good for engraved glass, I just didn't I think there could be more because there's not a whole lot of contrast. You can't really get great gradients in wood or glass with a laser. So I had an idea to engrave the image into the glass and then engrave it in a piece of wood and then impose the glass on top of the wood to give it more of a smooth gradient. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. You can see what I mean by looking at this before and after picture. Applying the glass on top kind of softens up the wood engraving and makes it look like, well, not a wood engraving. And I like it because it actually makes it look like a real picture back from the early 19 or late 1800s with those old black and white box cameras. So let's review. What do I think about the Monport 130 watt CO2 laser? My first impressions were that it was very well built, very well put together. It was very easy to set up and get going. Had it going up in just a matter of hours after unpacking it. My experience with a CO2 laser over the diode lasers that I've been using has been great. I didn't realize that there was this much difference between CO2 lasers and diode lasers, but there is a great amount of difference. 
you just they're more versatile you can do more with them just like you saw me engraving that glass if you're going to do it on a diode laser you have to prepare the glass with tape or paint or some sort of snake oil to get the laser beam to etch in the glass but on this guy you just throw the glass down there and let her go and that means a lot when it comes to time and preparation and whatnot another thing i like about this laser is the price let's be honest if you're researching this line of laser between the different manufacturers all these lasers are very similar in their design so i believe that whoever you buy it from you're getting basically the same laser so it comes down to price and if you were to compare Monport to the other manufacturers you're going to save chunk of change depending on what you want so though i don't have experience with other manufacturers i have to believe that they would be similar so what it would come down to me is how much am I paying? Now, what do I dislike about the machine? There's two things. Number one, and I mentioned it earlier, is the fume extraction. It's very poor, it's very weak. It works. It, it'll pull the fumes out of the machine, but it doesn't do it well. And in fairness, if you research any of these machines, be it foreign or domestic, they all have that weakness and just about everybody has to upgrade them, update them to improve the fume extraction. The second thing that I believe could be better is the air assist. It's not very strong. It is always on, which is good for engraving, but it could stand just a few more pounds when you're doing some sort of cutting on the laser. And the small compressor that comes with the machine just doesn't have enough power to do that. So just like the fume extraction, dozens if not hundreds of folks that have these machines regardless of the manufacturer they upgrade or update the air assist something more powerful so between those two things which is a very simple fix you're going to have yourself one heck of a machine when you're done so there you have it i believe that you are interested if you're shopping around for co2 lasers that you can't go wrong with this machine or this line of machine from Monport. and if you're remotely interested you can use my coupon code MS Woodworks on my port site to get 10% off of anything you purchase from the site. All this information will be in the description of this video as well as a link to the website. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I got some big plans for this laser. And I'm going to mix it up with my CNC machine a little bit too. So I'll see you next time. Take care.